Years ago, when I started watching Leave it to Beaver for the first time, whenever Wally's friend Lumpy would show up, I knew the Cleaver boys were headed for trouble. Lumpy, often aided by that scallywag of scallywags, Eddie Haskell, was always up for a little bit of mischief. In fact, both of those boys were just wired that way. In fact, Clarence Lumpy Rutherford, as played by actor Frank Bank, had been that way from the very beginning. During his memorable first appearance, he was actually more of a bully than he would turn out to be. In that first episode, for whatever reasons, Lumpy felt like Wally and the Beeb needed to walk the long way home. Of course, the boys got their revenge. Well, kinda. It turns out that the trap that they'd set for Lumpy would be stumbled into instead by his father. As time went on, Lumpy became a friend to Wally. As he was prone to pranks and all sorts of mischief, he wasn't always the best of friends, but he was a friend nonetheless. During the show's six seasons, Bank would appear as Lumpy more than 50 times. And as the show progressed, Lumpy's character continued to develop and we got to learn more about him, such as the fact that he was a little on the slow side, some might even say dim-witted. Although he was in the same grade as Wally, he was actually three years older than him. We also began to understand why Lumpy was a bit of a bully, as he turned out to be teased quite a bit because of his size. Anyway, by the time season six came to an end, I must admit that I had grown awful fond of Lumpy. As with many of the characters on the show, including Eddie Haskell, the writers and other members of the creative team were not content to simply let Lumpy be two-dimensional. Sure, he was an occasional foil and sometimes antagonist for a character on the show, but he was also someone who, although he had many faults, you could really get behind and care for. At least I did. And you know what? The same holds true for the actor, Frank Bank. It turns out that Frank had been playing against type all along. Frank wasn't dim-witted at all. In fact, he was quite a savvy guy, especially with money, and Frank knew that he needed to figure out what life after Leave it to Beaver looked like. On more than one occasion, Frank has admitted that he would have enjoyed working longer in the entertainment industry. Unfortunately, post-Beaver, casting directors could only see Lumpy whenever Frank auditioned for something. It turns out, like many of his castmates, Frank had been typecast. And Frank knew that he didn't want to end up like George Reeves. Whether it was murder or suicide, what is certain is that Reeves was down on his luck after the adventures of Superman came to an end because of typecasting. And Frank knew that he didn't want to take even one step down that path. So how could he survive, perhaps even thrive, how could he strike back against an industry that refused to acknowledge that he was anything more than Clarence Lumpy Rutherford? The answer, it turns out, was pretty darn simple. He would put his keen mind and his financial savviness to work. Within just a few years after Leave it to Beaver ended, Bank had become a licensed broker handling complicated stock and bond transactions for some of the biggest companies in the US. Over time, he would build a reputation as an insightful financial advisor who understood market dynamics and could apply the right amount of risk to garner an appropriate return for his clients. Before long, Bank was making more money than he ever thought possible, even more than he might have had if he'd continued to work full time in the entertainment industry. And of course, Bank did love being lumpy. So he returned for the Steal the Beaver TV movie and the new Leave it to Beaver TV show, and it was fun to see him back in action as Lumpy once again. You know, one of these days I would love to see that show return to television. I understand there's some legal hurdles that need to be overcome, but it sure would be nice to see the updated adventures of Wally and the Beaver again. It really would. Come on, me TV. Make it happen. I know you can. I have faith. I believe in you guys. But getting back to Frank. Over time, Frank's friends and castmates all began to rely on his financial wisdom to ensure that they were in a good place financially for the remainder of their lives. And the best part was that they knew what kind of guy their financial advisor was. He was smart, and most importantly, he was someone that they could trust. Heck, they'd known him since he was just a kid. You know what? Frank took their trust very seriously. So seriously, in fact, that he was often more than just a financial advisor. 
You see, Frank became a trusted advisor for a lot of different things. He found many ways to strike back at the industry that had, at least for a time, felt that he was no longer relevant, especially whenever there was some sort of renegotiation of contracts due to advents in new technology such as streaming media. Frank was right there, helping his former castmates, better said friends, understand what really was in their best interest. Also after actress Barbara Billingsley passed away, Frank was instrumental in ensuring that she received long overdue recognition for her good deeds both on screen and off. Examples of all of these things can be found on YouTube of all things and if you track them down you'll find at the center of it all a man who is passionate about helping his friends. Frank isn't with us anymore. I guess you could say his days of striking back are over. Cancer finally got this fighter. He's been gone for a few years now. April 2013 to be exact. Dead at the age of 71. Still young, gosh dang it. Anyway, if you want to learn more about this life well lived, you may want to pick up his autobiography, Call Me Lumpy. From what I understand, this book is something of a wild ride. I'll post a link to it in the description field of this video. All right, one last picture. Let's go with the Three Musketeers. The terrific trio. Okay, maybe a better way to describe them is the Trinity of Terror. So what did you think about Lumpy? Did you enjoy the character or was he more of an irritation than anything else for you? Please share your memories in the comment section and while you're at it, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Maybe even share this video on Facebook or Twitter. And what the heck, why not subscribe to the channel? I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.